Hello and welcome to this episode of Heart and Health. My name is Dr. Shailesh Singh and I'm a cardiologist. Today I'll be talking about triglycerides. So if you have been keeping a check on your blood pressure, your diabetes status, your cholesterol levels, well, congratulations, you're on the right path. But there is something else which needs to be monitored and which is serum triglyceride levels. Serum triglycerides, if they're elevated, may be responsible for increased risk of heart disease. Let us try and understand what triglycerides actually are. Triglycerides are a type of fat which is found inside the body. Anything which we eat and if it is not converted to calories that is burned by the body, it is stored as triglyceride. This is storage form of fat and these triglycerides are stored in fat cells. It is as simple as that. So, if we are eating more calories than we actually need or than we actually burn, for example, high carbohydrate food, then we may develop increased triglyceride levels. Fasting lipid profile is used to assess the level of triglycerides in our blood. If serum triglyceride level is less than 150 mg per deciliter, it is said to be normal. If serum triglyceride level is between 150 mg per deciliter, to 199 milligram per deciliter, triglyceride levels are said to be borderline high. If serum triglyceride level is between 200 to 499 milligrams per deciliter, triglycerides are said to be high or elevated. If triglyceride level is more than equal to 500 milligrams per deciliter, then it is said that the person has very high levels of serum triglycerides. High triglyceride levels have been found to accelerate the process of atherosclerosis. What is atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis is the formation of plaques or blockages inside the arteries. And these arteries can be your arteries of your vein, your heart or peripheral limbs. Increased triglyceride levels can cause heart disease, even heart attack. And when the arteries of the vein are affected, it can cause stroke. Very high level of serum triglyceride level can also lead to acute pancreatitis, which is again a life threatening disease. Elevated triglyceride levels may be seen in persons or patients with diabetes mellitus or pre diabetes, metabolic syndrome, hypothyroidism. There are certain genetic conditions in which triglyceride levels can be elevated. Triglyceride levels can also be elevated because of certain drugs which include steroids, drugs used in HIV, cardiac patients usually receive some beta blockers, some patients receive some diuretics. These drugs can also contribute to the elevated level of triglycerides. Alcohol is a very strong predisposing factor for increased level of triglycerides. Patients who have extremely high level of triglycerides, they usually have some combination of a genetic defect in triglyceride metabolism and some poor lifestyle factor contributing to increased triglyceride levels. These poor lifestyle measures may include unhealthy diet or inadequate physical activity. So what all can be done to decrease the level of serum triglycerides? Number one, exercise. 30 minutes per day of exercise for all days of a week is advised. Number two, avoid sugar. Number three, avoid refined carbs or carbohydrate. Number four, avoid food which is made up of white flour or white flour. Number five, avoid fructose. Weight loss by cutting calories has also been found to decrease the serum triglyceride level. Decreased consumption of saturated fat can also help in decreasing the level of serum triglycerides. Decreasing the level of alcohol intake can also help in decreasing the serum triglyceride levels and then if possible i repeat if possible estrogen and other steroid hormones if they are being given if possible they can be avoided and this can also help in decreasing the level of serum triglycerides as far as the treatment is concerned we have been hearing of various drugs such as omega-3 fatty acids we have been listening about uh, fibrates we have been listening about statins obviously statins can be helpful so what are the drugs which can be offered to the patients who have got elevated serum triglyceride levels? 
So there are some new drugs, some older drugs, there are certain drugs, there are some drugs which have got proven benefits, there are some drugs which offer only numerical reduction in triglyceride levels and it does not translate into some cardiovascular benefits. Uh, the older drugs include omega-3 fatty acids, there are some drugs which we are using in contemporary practice such as statins and fibrates. There are some novel drugs which are being tested and tried in the Western world and most probably will be available in few years in India also. They have also been found to be beneficial in patients with elevated triglyceride levels. We are not talking about drugs here, I am just enumerating a few. One very important question which we face during our OPDs is, shall we get our lipid profile tested in fasting state or can we get it done in non-fasting state? The point which I am trying to tell you is that non-fasting triglyceride levels are slightly higher from fasting triglyceride levels. It is said that non-fasting triglyceride levels are approximately 27 mg per deciliter higher than fasting triglyceride levels. That is why it is said that in a non-fasting sample, serum triglyceride more than 175 mg per deciliter should be considered abnormal. This completes our very small discussion on serum triglyceride levels and its effect on our body. I hope that you found this video useful. Share the video with your loved ones, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.